What's up, guys? Welcome to the YouTube channel of mine. Uh, I'm bringing back an old favorite uh, top eight regionals interview things. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to do them again, and we haven't had them in a really long time, especially because there's so many events going on. So I brought back John Eng. Uh, he just top eighted uh, Hartford with Hitmonchan. How are you doing, John? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, last time I had John on here was when he was a senior and top eighted EUIC. So it has been a while. He no longer looks like he's six. Now he's like <laughs> 10. Um, so, John, talk to us a little bit about uh, why you went with Hitmonchan. So the main reason I went with Hitmonchan is because the weekend prior, I was in Berlin playing standard. I ended up getting top 64 with Pika Box, one card off of uh, Rubles list. And um, I was just feeling super tired, super exhausted. And uh, the past three expanded regionals, I had played him on Chen 2. I day 2'd all of them. So I felt really comfortable with the deck. I knew that it's Toad matchup, because Toad had been really dominant in Daytona, and like the control decks uh, were doing really well then. That its matchup with against those was pretty shaky. So I was taking a big risk by playing it and just hoping that people wouldn't play like super like toad control variants, especially the toad lasers deck again. And uh, I definitely made the right call. I didn't see any toad at all the entire weekend. And uh, yeah, that worked out. So I just mainly played it because I was super comfortable with it. And uh, I knew what I was doing with it. Right on. I mean, uh, I noticed that you played pyro and stuff in your list from last time. And this time you had like a more regular build with counter energies, prism energies, uh, a more a more consistent, straightforward build. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, the Pyro in Daytona was mainly a thing. It was for to like nail in the coffin versus Picaram. Um, I thought Hitmonchan would be pretty popular going into Daytona because like it boasted good matchups against, like I said, Picaram, which has been the most played deck consistently throughout the past expanded regionals. Same thing with uh, it being good against the Zorark variants and then being able to hold up itself against Archies relatively. So um, I thought like after the first two regionals, people would catch on Hitmonchan being like, all right, or like a reasonable call. So I wanted to have a tech for that. Um, I did play against one Hitmonchan, ended up tying it, do some pretty bad luck. Um, the Pyro, I, I might as well have been playing 57 cards in Daytona, though, to be completely honest with you. The Pyro was not worth its weight at all. So, uh, we, that was definitely a quick cut and for more consistency going into this one. Okay. Um, so I guess without further ado, I'll let you jump into your matchups a little bit. Talk to us about day one. All right, here, let me pull this up on my phone real quick. I should have that before. Um... So day one started off pretty shaky. I started 2-2, had to win out to go 4-0, and then I did my last one to get into day two. Okay. So it started off pretty shaky. Uh, so round one, I actually played against uh, Greg Minkley. He's a pretty well-known player from the New England area, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's playing Shock Lock. So that was great. Um, Shock Lock is an auto loss. Yep. Uh, uh, there is literally no way I can win the matchup, except if I donk them, I, or they just like prize everything they need. Luckily for me, game one, he opened with Lele and passed, and I was able to destroy him game one. And game two, we were in a really weird situation because he got the uh, lock going, but I play one escape rope. Okay. So I'm able to, like, escape rope outside of the uh, paralyzed lock and then hopefully, like, kill something. Or if he doesn't put up a Stoutland with the escape rope, I can go Guzma, kill something useful. And he only had one Raichu in play uh, because I think he, his prizes were, like, a hideous he prized gladian like double stretcher and a pikachu Jeez, okay it, it was it was awful so basically i was sitting there draw passing waiting to get into both escape rope and guzma because they're not putting on any pressure by like, right. killing in my board or anything so i'm just waiting to get it and i'm just like all right hopefully you don't set up a second stoutland so you don't just pivot back into another one so i can't guzma up your uh raichu to kill it because he has muck in play so that shuts off wapa fett so i can't shut off his Stoutland. It's a weird interaction, but uh, it's just a bunch of abilities being shut off. So uh, he doesn't get the second Stoutland by the time I get uh, Escape Rope and Guzma. So I'm able to go Escape Rope. He puts up, I uh, think it was a Lele or something. And I go, Guzma, you're only Raichu in play. Knock it out. And then he just scoops immediately. So uh, I definitely caught a break with that one. That matchup is atrocious, and I am never excited to play that matchup with him much. But uh, we got there. Yeah. And then uh, round two, we played against a Pikaram. That one matchup's pretty straightforward. Um, 
There are a few like things they can do to make it a little bit hard. They can play cards like Zapdos, which is hard for you to knock out. Uh, Jolteon EX, shutting off your entire deck. Luckily for us, we have outs to that by like putting a special condition on it with Nihi Lego. You can confuse and poison it. It's really uh, efficient against them. We also have the Escape Rope Guzma Clan if they have a bench, but usually like what they try to do is try to like Cassius away their bench to leave Jolteon in their active. Right. You can whittle it down with Shrine Damage, and then uh, one other cute thing that was super clutch in this one specifically was a uh, Cacleon being able to copy Swift with Prism Energy. Oh, okay. And uh, like a choice deck. So yeah, so like he did the whole thing where he's like, all right, Cassius, my bench. Uh, I'm using Jolteon to swing at you. And it's looking like, since he actually was really smart, and like what most speaker players do is they just dump their Electro Powers because they're just like, I don't need these. I'm going to kill everything eventually. Right. But um, with Shrine, you actually need to like speed up the pace you're taking knockouts if you're going to go with that strategy. So he was actually really smart and held on to most of his Electro Powers. So uh, he was at a point where he probably could have won the game had I not had the Kecleon. So basically, I would put a choice band uh, on a, and a prism on a Kecleon, and I would copy Swift and hit for 60 plus Shrine damage to speed up the process of killing the one Jolteon. So he was forced to bench stuff, and from then on, I was able to escape Rope Guzma and do the whole shebang there. But um, yeah, so we have a couple outs to Jolteon, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, round three, I played against Otto, Ottavon. Uh, he's playing Pyroar with like Wailord GX and Hoopa and like the whole stall. Jeez, oh, yeah. Strategy. Um, my only out to Pyroar is, uh, confusing and poisoning it po- uh, with Nihilego using, uh, void tentacles to confuse and poison it. Um, I, he has so many turns to just get healing cards that it's just really n- impossible. He'll just fob away all my energies. I only play one basic fighting energy. So all my special energies are practically useless. So, uh, that was a quick loss. I lost twice. Uh, I'm honestly surprised after I lost game one, I didn't just scoop it up. I was, I was hoping to just donk him game two and then make, maybe bring it to a tie. Right. Uh, that didn't work out. And then, uh, round four, I played against Sam Ertman, who, for those who don't know, he's been killing it with Trevenant lately. He's got, like, day two at the past, like, three regionals he's played it to. And he, like, top so, four, uh, uh, Toronto, I think, and then he got finals this weekend. Yeah. So he's been doing amazing with the deck. Um... So I kind of knew, I was pretty serious playing Trevenant going in, um, and it was a matter of like six minutes before we both stood up and went to go get lunch. The matchup's another pretty much unwinnable one. There's just right. no way for you to, unless they go like ditto pass, there's no way for you to efficiently just kill like that many Trevenants in order to win the game before your board is just like completely dead. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, went into the tournament saying I would beat these decks and I would lose to these decks, so I, I mean... Which is what you get with it, Munchen. Right. So I wasn't too mad about it. Um, going into lunch, I was 2 2. So it was kind of like one of those I have to go 4 0 from here. And then, depend- I didn't know if I wanted the ID or not. Because where I'm at in my season right now is I'm slightly comfortable in the top 16 in A for overall, bearing like a few like weird things happening with people going to special events and stuff like that. So I really was feeling this tournament just like I don't want to just like another day two. I want to like actually go far. So if I was like I was considering it being like if I were at a situation or a six and two and playing it out, uh, I didn't end up doing that. But um, it was definitely on my mind. So I was kind of just like I was pretty laid back going into this tournament, thinking knowing that I was pretty safe where I am at this, in the season. But um, I guess going into round five, I played against a uh, Pikaram. So that was a real nice matchup coming back from lunch after losing twice to. Practically unwinnable matchups. Mm-hmm. Um, he as well had Jolteon EX, and I had my multiple ways of destroying it game one. So then he realized Jolteon EX it just isn't a way he can win the game. So he attacked with Pikaram, trying to go very aggressive. Uh, I ended up 2 0 him because the matchup's just that good. But um, he, it's, it definitely gets harder for me, ironically enough, if they don't use the Jolteon EX. Right. Um, round six, I played against the Zoro Garb. Um, this one went to game three. Game one, I kind of just ran over all this stuff. He started Zorua, I knocked it out. So getting that first prize is always super convenient. Put Wobbuffet in the active. He wasn't able to get the return kill on the Wobbuffet because he had to, like, Chorus for, what, six? And then couldn't use trade to find DCE. So uh, that was pretty easy. Game two, I started, I remember starting Diancy and then it dying pretty early on. Things just weren't really going together. So I scooped that one up pretty quickly just to make sure I had time to win again because I'm very confident in this matchup, especially because of uh, the Kecleon, which comes into uh, play in Game 3, where uh, he actually had multiple Trash Lange in his deck, and I had a really awkward Sycamore turn one where I had to dump a bunch of items, and I was like, great, this is not what I want against a Trash Lange deck, especially when my deck doesn't deal super well with it. So 
he uh, you started using trash lights really early. Um, I was able to sledgehammer with baby, sorry, baby Buzzle, one of them. And uh, after that, he used another trash lanch, and I was able to uh, use uh, Kecleon okay. to actually copy its typing. And then with Prism Energy, copy trash lanch and hit it for weakness, and then knock it out. So he was out of Garbodor's at this point, and it was pretty much just free reign for my Hitmonchan to uh, kill his Zoroarks. Um, round seven, uh, I played against another Pikaram. So I'm feeling really good at this point because I'm after round four I was like it is very realistic for me because like the the middle tables ish or like the middle closer to bottom tables was just a lot of like Pikaram, a lot of Zoragarb, a lot of matchups I really wanted to see. Mm-hmm. So I was like it's very realistic for me to just hit four of these in a row and to make day two. So I'm at round seven right now or no uh, yeah I'm at round seven right now and it's against a Pikaram. pretty smooth two out it just match up when is it supposed to. Round eight, I played against Zoragarb. This Zoragarb was a little uh, interesting, though. It played counter energies. I didn't see its counter attackers, uh, but uh, I did see counter energy. I ended up on a Trubbish at one point. Um, I 2 would him. Game one was pretty smooth. It was uh, He had not much really going. Wobbuffet shut him down the way it should have. I had my answers to his trash lanch, and I was just able to win the game from there. Uh, game two, it got down. It was actually pretty close. It got down. came down to an N. Uh... And I had he uh, didn't set up Garbotoxin, which I, I still haven't decided whether or not setting up Garbotoxin is correct in that matchup because like the way you win the game is like ending me into a bad hand and getting ahead that way because I'm just taking prizes nonstop. Right. But then again, it's just shutting yourself off, so you're just kind of just like drawn to nothing when you're ending yourself. Um, but he didn't set it up, so I had Instruct, and uh, it got to a point where I just Blade GX for the game, set up all my prizes, killed two Zoroarks, killed the Garbodor, and then the last one was Blade. And then uh, round nine, I didn't know what my opponent was playing. Um, at this point, uh, my, I had hit, I've already hit best finish limit for regionals. So if I had lost that round and gotten top 64, I would have gotten 10 points, which I wasn't really feeling. I was like, I'm pretty sure if I ID here, I can not get screwed out of top 32 and get a little more out of the day. Mm-hmm. So I was feeling at that point with like looking at the matchups I had in day two. Um, and we, I took the ID. Uh, I was feeling pretty good. Uh, especially after coming back 4-0 after 2-2. And, um, yeah, I just got some rest. Yeah. Ready for the next day. Um, Paired against Andy Gray playing Archie Stoyce. Um, this is actually the first Archies I've ever lost to in a tournament with this deck. And I've played this deck, including this tournament, to the past four extended regionals. And I've played Archies like six times. So I was a little disappointed with the loss. Um, something that Andy Gray did play that uh, didn't catch me off guard. Because I, I, I knew like Archie lists would play it. But like it was just a key card in the matchup because I just like didn't have a response to it at the time. Was escape rope so they can get around Wobbuffet pretty easily. I actually made a note of go. I went first game one. And I made a note of I started Wobbuffet and then had him on Chan on bench. I uh, nest balled rather for than like Diancy or like Oranguru or something like that. I got a second Wobbuffet because I was assuming that he would play the card. Um, in the early game, it didn't end up mattering. He used it actually in the late game. He ended himself to. Or I think he Tate and lies at himself. To get the escape rope and then got around the wob, you set up and then superior for game. Uh, game two, I just got nothing going. I just got destroyed. It was pretty uneventful. So I'm 6 3 1 at this point. Uh, I need to go 4 0 to maybe make top eight. I'm hearing 31 is bubble at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, it would have been bubble, but uh, there's a few awkward ties. But um, yeah, so I'm just. What's going through my head is right now is just I need one more win and then a tie, and then I'm 32, good for 32. I'm not worried about getting 64 or any of that nonsense. I get money and everything like that. It's like baby steps. Mm-hmm. But uh, next round, I'm against a uh, player named Brandon Dixon. He was playing Pikaram. I had no news playing Pikaram since I had seen him playing earlier. So I was pretty confident with that. Um, his Pikaram list was whack. And it was really good against Hitmonchan. So basically, uh, game one... Uh, I just destroyed him. Uh, I'm pretty sure his Jolteon died within like the first two turns, so he okay. didn't even get to attack. And he had scooped, so he had no shot here. Um, and I was wondering, I was a little intrigued by the fact that he went with the Jolteon method, but maybe he just didn't know. I don't know. So I, I was definitely keep, keeping that in my mind. I was like, in game two, he might just try to go for it again, I guess, because I didn't really like use any of my techs, like the Kecleon or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So game two, he actually goes with the Jolteon method. And I'm like, all right, this is fine. Uh, he, I prized my escape rope 
So I can't go escape rope Guzma, which is like the easiest way to do it. It's like teammates the turn ahead of time, sit on it, and hopefully they don't end you. Um, so I went with Nihilego, tried to confuse Poison it. I also had surprised my rescue stretcher. So my attackers against this Jolteon are limited. So I go confuse Poison, and he goes, okay, fighting Fury Belt, my uh, Jolteon, uh, Pokemon Center Lady. Oh, yikes. Yeah. And Electro Power to do the perfect damage to knock out your Mighty Hilego. And I was like, I literally can't do anything. Because if I Kecleon on him, he's going to go via Seeker for the Pokemon Center Lady, and it's over. Mm -hmm. So I lose that. Uh, game three, I am aware of the PCL now. So I'm like, all right, this is why he wants to go for the Chilteon play so often. Um, I did not prize Escape Rope. So fortunately for me, uh, when I went for the Nihi Lego play, he had to use Tapu Lele to get the PCL rather than just having it in his hand, which meant he had a bench Pokemon. So I could go Escape Rope Guzma. Uh, I got rid of the Jolteon quick with like a Sledgehammer. And then he just scooped it up. There's no way he could win from there. So at this point, I am 7-3-1. Going to the next round, playing against the one, the only, Azul Garcia Griego. Uh, he's playing DDG's weird control Zoro garb thing. The, the, they call it the control Zoro garb, but like the most controlly thing they have is three parallel city in there and like a hue. So I don't know, but uh, I'm feeling pretty good because uh, uh, I did forgot to mention this earlier, but Justin Bokari, my good friend and uh, testing partner, someone who I rode up with <laughs> to the event, um, was playing the same 60 as me and he had played against, I'm pretty sure two DDG members prior and beat <laughs> them pretty much with ease. So he told me that the matchup isn't much to worry about. Uh, same deal. Trash Lanch is annoying. They played bodybuilding dumbbells, so I guess killing stuff was a little bit harder. So Kecleon is huge to deal with Trash Lanch, um, etc. It's really just the same thing as another Zoro garb. Um, if anything, theirs is better against us because, like, the extra Skyfield nonsense, their list play, you don't need it. All my Pokemon are, like, die easy. So their list is better against us. Um, game one, I drew really hot against him. Uh, it came down to an N in the end, as the matchup usually does. And uh, I hit the Guzma for the game. Uh, game two, I uh, got the first turn kill on Azoru, uh, put up Wobbuffet. He didn't have a response to the Wob, so I was able to get ahead two prizes before he took a single one. And um, he just didn't get much from there, and I just won. I, I won that one with Blade GX. I want a handful of games with Blade GX. Um, next round. So now I'm good into like top 32. So now I'm just thinking, all right, all right, what's the next step? Top 16 or top 8? There's only two more rounds to go. So if I go 2 0 from here, I'm on the bubble for top 8. If I go 1 0 and tie, I didn't really know like what the math was for me to make yeah, 16. Yep. I was kind of just like, let's just try to win all our games. So I'm playing against Night March in round 13, mm -hmm. which is. I, I don't know my opinion on the matchup because, like, you both can attack pretty early on, and it's just all about trading. And, like, you have Wobbuffet to, like, sort of shut them down. But if they ever have to bench a Shaman, you can go, like, hit him on, like, shri keep a Shrine in play for, like, one turn and go hit him on the lead, Shaman on the bench to, like, switch the trade. Um, because, like, sometimes they need to use Shaman to, like, draw into their extra stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, game, and then, like, Pumpkaboo is also really hard to kill because, like, my lists in the past. Uh, not Daytona, but for Greensboro and Toronto, played two muscle band, one choice band. But I noticed more of a shift in the format to like more GX based decks. So for the past two, I did two choice band, one muscle band, which means and only with one muscle band, that means it's really hard to kill Pumpkaboos because it has resistance to fighting. Okay. So those are a little bit hard to move around. But um, past that, the matchup's pretty all right, I think. Uh, he won the. He, yeah, he won the coin flip and opted to go first. So I knew I would get the first knockout if I had started like Hitmonchan or just like start Wob and like Karina with like energy or something like that. Uh, luckily for me, he starts Joltik and I start uh, Hitmonchan. So that's a free knockout. I don't need any damage modifiers. I just need an energy card. Um, he actually let looses me on turn one and uh, I draw the best four card hand I've seen in my life. There's a Sycamore, there's an Energy, there's a Wobbuffet, and then there's a Floatstone. So I'm like, perfect. I don't even care what this next card is. This is exactly what I want. And then we go back and forth trading. Uh, the Wobbuffet slows him down, uh, and eventually I get ahead, like, I think it is by, like, two prizes. So he goes for an end play, and then off that end I get teammates, and I'm like, this still doesn't win me the game yet, because I need I have two prizes left. But basically what I do is there's a Hitmonchan with a 
Choice Band and Two Strongs on it, Diancy in play. And I go Teammates for Kartana Prism Energy. Uh, okay. Hit and run, get down to one prize card, leave the Hitmonchan in the active, and I give him a, like, I pretty much checkmate him. Because, like, if he, because he has three prizes left. So if he goes Guzma, kill the Kartana, I kill him with Hitmonchan. If he kills the Hitmonchan, I just go Blade GX. So he just scooped it up. He was like, all right, you have me checkmated. Mm-hmm. Um, in game two, he tries to go for the Let Loose thing again, except it backfires on him. And uh, doesn't get much going. I'm up three prizes, and then eventually he's just like, yeah, I concede. He's just struggling. Like, he has a stretcher for a Joltik to make sure he doesn't get benched. Oh, uh, it was pretty ugly. Yeah. So that was a little bit unfortunate, but I'm definitely happy about that. So going into this round, we were able to calculate a little bit more of, like, what the bubble would be, what, like, we're looking at for, like, top eight. Mm-hmm. Um, noticing a handful of Trevenant decks and a Shock Lock, and I'm like, lovely. I can't win the tournament. But, um, like I said, that's one of the things with Hitmonchan. You have really bad matchups and really good matchups. There's rarely ones that are like in between like that. Like the closest thing to in between is like Argy Choice and Night March. So um I play against luckily for me, I play against uh Zoro Garb in my win and in. I get the down pair. Uh for context, uh people that had my record or the same match points as me, there were two Trevenants, a Picaram, and an Archies. Archies was Connor Finton also an ARG. Uh a good Archies player is a hard matchup in my opinion. Uh, the two Trevenants are obviously abysmal, so I'm not very happy about my odds. And the one Picaram, the one Picaram, I would have gladly, gladly taken that. But um, I got the down pair to the Zorgarb, which is also totally fine. Uh, so I'm set up against him. Super nice guy. Uh, game one, uh, he red cards me. I draw out of it. I was very fortunate for that. Um, game two, he red cards me again. It sticks. At this point, I'm like, why the hell is this dude red card turn one two games in a row? Yikes. So game three, luckily for me, he doesn't get the red card, and I'm going first. So I'm able able to a little establish a little bit more before he starts attacking me. So I'm like guaranteed the first knockout on something, etc. The game does get a little shaky though, because I end up wind up having to just discard more items than I'd like to early. So trash lands comes into play. So it's going to be one of those games where it comes out to an end at the end, and me being able to deal with this trash land, whether or not be Buzzwool, Kecleon, or just Guzmang around it, try to get knockouts. Uh, I remember one of the big points in the game is uh, after I took one prize, he's able to kill my Wobbuffet with uh, Zoroark. And I actually had like the perfect combo in my hand. I had Hitmonchan on the bench with a strong choice ban, Diancie on my bench, trying and play. So that was a kill on a Zoroark right there. So that was a really good turn for me. And uh, from there, he ends me. I got my teammates and whatnot, and he wasn't able to keep up. I actually ended up winning the game with Blade GX. The card is so nice. Nice. <laughs> um, so basically, my, the dilemma at this point is I'm at 10 3 1. So my 31 match points, uh, the way we did the math, uh, there would be one bubble. My resistance was awful. I'm pretty sure not a single one of my opponents won in the very last round, besides like Azul. Um, all of my opponents had been like, I guess a little bit negative on the day. I wasn't comfortable to say the least. But uh, on stream, the uh, match that's playing is Trevenant versus uh, Zorark counter deck with like Macargo and stuff like that. And uh, they were the, one of the win and in rounds. Uh, the Trevenant was up one game with like 10 minutes left. It was still up in the air who was winning game two. So at this point, I'm like, my only way of securing like top eight is if these guys tie. So I'm just sitting there just like biting my nails. I'm like super anxious, like, oh my god, please let this Zorark win game two and then just like not let the Trevenant player go phantom pass in game three. Luckily for me, uh, the Zorark player wins game two. And, uh, uh, the game three, literally, the opening turn starts with a minute left. Uh, Trevenant player benches a wall, benches a phantom, plays a supporter card. Zar player plays Bridget. At that point, it's pretty much over. So my only hope is just like, all right, let's hope one of them isn't conceding to the other, and it, they weren't. So they ended up tying, and that, that guaranteed me a seed. I was very fortunate to make top eight at this event, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, standings go up. I see him against teammates, Jose Marrero, playing Rayquaza. Um, uh, the way I feel about this match, I don't know how I feel about this matchup right now, because I'm very negative against it, but it seems like not bad when you think about it. I have one prize attackers. I'm two-shotting you. Right. I have right. Shrine. Yeah, when you get to, like, the two prize turn, like, Nihilego, you can copy your Zerora or something or another. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, everything was pretty smooth with deck checks and everything. Everyone was good. We sat down. It was done in a really timely fashion. Um, game one, I draw my opening hand. It's two Wobbuffets, like a Via Seeker, a Guzma, a Beast Energy, and a Rescue Stretcher. So I'm like, Grant, fantastic. And there's a few other like deck cards in there too. So uh, game one is really uneventful. I'm just like drawing, passing, drawing, passing. Well, I mean, he's not doing much either because he can't use abilities and his entire deck is abilities. So I'm like, maybe, please, just let me draw out of this and then I'll like still be able to take advantage of the fact that you're doing literally nothing except attaching an energy card every turn. And uh, I wasn't, so unfortunately I lost game one. Uh, game two, more or less the same. We both were actually, there was a period of time, Jose and I laugh about this still, um, we like for like three turns, both of us just drew and then passed. Like but neither of our decks were working. It was very awkward for both decks. It was just awful. Uh, I got to the point where I drew out of it. Um, the biggest threat on his board was a Shaman Prism because it's very hard for me. It's one of those cards where I need to use Muscle Band, Strong Energy, and to have Diancie in play in order to hit and run it for knockout. So I was I hit hit and run a Rayquaza prior. And I was like, all right, the Shaman is a threat. I need to use Hitmonlee to get rid of it. Even though it puts me on odd prizes, this is fine. I can blade GX later after take KOing two G GXs. We're chilling. Um, so, yeah. The next kill comes from a Rayquaza. Because I had hit and, uh, hit and run it prior. Uh, there's Shrine in play also this entire time. So everything is like accumulating damage. Um, I killed the Rayquaza. <laughs> Going down to three prizes. I actually noticed that a Prism Energy and a Cartana GX are prize in my last three at this point, and I'm like, great, this actually might be relevant, especially the whole Cartana thing. Um, there's uh, my Hitmon Lee. Uh, I can stretcher it back, kill a Shaman that has been accumulating damage on the bench with Shrine, and I'm able to do that, go down to one prize. Cartana is my last prize, and I get the Prism and like some other useless card. And I'm like, fantastic. I need to kill this Rayquaza that has been accumulating damage on the bench this entire time. Um, luckily for me, I have a Wobbuffet pris I have a Wobbuffet on the bench with the Prism Energy on it. I have the Prism in my hand and a Guzma in my hand. I can use the Psychic Assaults to knock it out. But um, he sees that the Wobbuffet is the biggest threat. And... Uh, gets the uh, Guzma on it. Uh, Guzma's around like my... No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, he does Coco GX first, because my Hitmon Lee is active. Then he Guzmas up the uh, Wobbuffet, kills it with Skyhead Claws. He has a fresh GX there with me, having one prize left, and I'm like, oh, lovely. Um, after that, I, I promote the Hitmon Lee, I draw, I see there is a, uh, what's it called? They, um, the prism in my hand, another wob. So I bench that, attach prism to that, and then I go uh, Guzma with the wob active uh, up the Rayquaza that at this point only has a grass energy on it. Rayquaza has three retreat. Jose has a one card hand. I'm like, there's no way you have Guzma. I can lock you there, play Sycamore next turn, get an energy card, attach it, and kill you with Psychic Assault. Um, he goes pass afterwards, and then I'm like, draw, fantastic Sycamore, a whole lot of nothing. And I'm like, okay, I mean, sure. One more turn. I bench Baby Buzz, will attach strong to it. So now, energy, like an energy card that I can put on Wobbuffet and Floatstone are an out to win the game next turn. I have Via Seeker for Karina. I get the Floatstone. I know my Kartana is my last prize card, so I know the last Floatstone's in my deck. Um, no, but he top decks Via Seeker for Guzmo and wins the game there. So that was pretty unfortunate, uh, but uh, it happens. <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. complain too much. I mean... That is unfortunate prizing in top eight. Uh, yeah. Sounds like your deck just kind of stopped working, but you dodged all the Trevenants and stuff to get there, which is pretty oh, nice. Yeah, very lucky for me to get top eight at this event. Um, I guess Expanded's kind of gone for the rest of the year, and so how do you how do you feel about that, I guess? Um, I've never been a hater of Expanded as a format, per se. I mean... Like I said, the past four events have played Hitmonchan or some variant of Hitmonchan with like lists evolving like every single tournament. So I like haven't put much very much thought into it because most events are just like, screw it, let's play Hitmonchan again. Uh, luckily for me it has worked out, but like the format I, there's so many cards, that, like so many things can happen. It's just like I don't know. One of the things that like I'm 
pretty happy about in Expanded, though, is that, like, less games are solved by, uh, like, turn one let loose as opposed mm-hmm. to standard and stuff like that. Like, obviously, and there's a there's a really good comeback mechanic in N, which I always like to see. Standard's kind of lacking that, because, like, while turn one let loose is very detrimental because, like, you want to have, like, a lot of stuff on turn one, when it comes to the late game, like, four cards plus a top deck, if you're, like, trying to stop your opponent from, like, getting the Guzma for game, five cards is, is a lot. Especially when like everything your deck is like thinned out and stuff like that, so the comeback mechanic in standard isn't really that good. So that's what another thing I like about expanded over standard. Um, I am excited that for the rest of the year I'm focusing on one format because, uh, for instance, Daytona Beach uh, before Berlin was expanded. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berlin was standard, and then the week after Hartford was expanded. So having to switch back and forth was a little bit annoying, but. Uh, yeah, I like Expanded as a format, but I'm very excited to only worry about Standard now. All right, well, thanks for being on here. Any shout-outs and stuff you want to give before we uh, peace out? Shout-out to the team, Team ARG. I have the honor of being teammates with you, Jose, who just got the first win for ARG on this Finally, season. Dude. Finally, yeah, honestly. Um, love the guys. They're the best teammates in the world. Uh, shout-out to some friends that brought me up. Uh Harris Nor drove. Uh, Justin Bakari has always been a huge help. Will Jenkins, Michael Cater, and the whole Maryland, Virginia gang. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, dude, thanks for being on here. Hopefully, you top it something else so I can have you on here again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, peace. Awesome. Thanks.